Okay. All right, I'm going to do number 20 from the review packet right now. It says the gypsy moth is a serious threat to oak and aspen trees. A state agriculture department places traps throughout the state to detect the moths. When traps are checked periodically, the mean number of moths trapped is only 0 0.5. But some traps have several moths. The distribution of moth counts is discrete and strongly skewed with a standard deviation of 0 0.7. What are the mean and standard deviation of the average of moths being X bar in 50 traps? Well, part A, the central limit theorem lets us still figure out what the mean is, okay? And that's important to note, and it's important to note because it comes from a skewed distribution. But if we state that, then if we use the central limit theorem, we would say the mu is equal to 0 0.5, and the standard deviation is equal to 0 0.7 divided by the square root of 50. When I calculate this... When I calculate this, I get 0 0.7 divided by, oops, divide. give me one second, I get 0 0.0989, I truncated it there, I did not round, so okay. So that's the sampling distribution there. What is the mean and the standard deviation? It could also be asked to describe the sampling distribution. The next question, or part of the question, is find the probability that the average number of moths in 50 traps is greater than 0.6. This is the no state plan, or st I'm sorry, state plan do conclude. The state part is what do we know? What are we trying to figure out? I'm trying to find out the probability. You guys should get used to this. When we're trying to figure out the probability, we always say P. We're trying to figure out that the average number of moths is greater than 0 0.6. We have to decide now if we're going to use a P hat or an X bar. And we know it's going to be an X bar. And the reason that is, is we're dealing with quantitative data, the number of moths trapped. We can find averages with this. We're not looking at categorical data percentages. So we use X bar. And it says just greater than 0.6. We'll leave it like that. Next, we're going to state the conditions. This is our RIN. We're dealing with the means, okay, the average data. First, we say, is it random? And it doesn't state that it's random. This is one thing that you can assume. You just put assume check. Next is the independence rule. Okay, We say we're dealing with traps now. The number of moths and oh. Sorry, I had a mind, mind blank for a second. Okay, we're dealing with the number of moths. I lied. The number of moths. I think I helped someone and we were saying talking about traps, but it's the number of moths in 50 traps, okay? So we would say 10 times 50 traps, that's our sample size, is less than or equal to capital N. Well, capital N then would be what? It's gonna be all traps though, right? And we're gonna say that's reasonable, okay? Finally, then, after the I is the N, that's the normal condition. Okay. With the normal condition, then, we say N has to be greater than or equal to 30, and 50 is greater than or equal to 30. Our conditions are met. We can then move on to the mechanics. With the mechanics, always draw your picture. Mark your mu or your p. P, again, is for categorical data. Mu is for quantitative, 0 0.6. Our standard deviation, which we said was, well, we didn't find it yet. I'm sorry. We take 0 points. I lied, you guys. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. The eraser, I think, is right here. Isn't that right there? I've never made a mistake. I'm just kidding. Here we go. The razor is right there. All right. 
the mu was actually 0 0.5. I did the question on accident. Okay, don't make that mistake. The standard deviation is 0 0.7 divided by the square root of 50. When we calculate that, we get 0 0.09899. Okay, then we're wondering what's the probability that x bar is greater than 0 0.6. So we shade to the right. Our mind, we've just orientated ourselves. Okay, and now we can execute our problem. Okay, this is the orientation part of problem solving. Execute, zoms, z is equal to 0 0.6 minus 0 0.5. Divided by 0 0.9, let me just make sure I have it right, 8, 9, 9. When I type that in my calculator, 0 0.6 minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.9899, I get 0 0.30. Okay, I now go to my table. When I look at my table like I'm doing right now, Zero point three zero is point six one seven nine. This is not our final answer though because it's greater than. So we do one minus zero point six one seven nine. When I type that in my calculator, I get zero point three eight two one. This is my p value. Okay. I'm going to practice that linkage statement that I think is a really good um, piece of insurance on the AP test. It also shows that you know everything. What did we do first? We were looking for the probability that x bar is greater than 0 0.6. We then that led us to find a z score, the probability that z was greater than 0 0.30, which gives us a p value of 0 0.3821. We then write our conclusion. Use your question to help you. The probability that the average number of moths in 50 traps um, the probability that the average number of moths in 50 traps is greater than 0 0.6 is about 0 0.3821 according to the normal model. And eight minutes later, I'm done.